eight, seven, six, four, three, two, one, and lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis. A final visit to enhance the vision of Hubble into the deepest grandeur of our universe. Bypass across the board, scooter, no action. Houston now controlling Atlantis on its way. Atlantis on its way, all three engines now throttling down as the area begins, as the vehicle passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Atlantis, Houston, no action on the MPS H2 out P. Section 3.1 of the Atlantis has to do with three dimensional force systems. So, what's shown here is a boat that's moored to the dock, and there's some ropes attached to it. And we can envision that this is a 3D system and there exists force in each of the ropes and there's also a reaction force at A. To establish equilibrium, if the system is analyzed, the sum of all the force vector has to equal to zero. This is the equilibrium requirement. This expression right here can be further broken down into components, meaning I can add the sum of all the forces in the x, and that's equal to zero. So what I do is I need to establish the Cartesian vector notations for all of these forces, get the x components, and set it equal to zero. So let's say we use a coordinate system such as that, where this is x, y, and z. And I continue on and I have to find all the y components and set it equal to zero as well as find the z components and set it equal to zero. For the x components, I'll have the x component for the force B, x component for force C, x component for force D, and E. And it all has to equal to zero. And I do the same for some of the forces in the y which would be FBY, FB, FCY plus FDY plus FEY, and that has to equal to zero. And same thing for the Z, FBZ plus FCZ plus FDZ and FEZ must equal to zero. These are called the equations, equations of equilibrium. When solving 3D force systems, the very first step you have to do is draw the free body diagram. Draw free body diagram. And with that said, you should specify all angles and you should specify all axes, your x, y, and z. After that, what you want to do is apply your equations of equilibrium. Equations of equilibrium. In order to find some of these components, it will be required for you to apply some of these equations that we've had in the past, as well as these. So let's consider this system where at the origin, we'll call that point A, there's a ring, and there are one, two, three, four cables attached to it. Cable B also has a spring attached to it and finally that spring is attached to a support that lies along the x-axis. Cable C is in that back quadrant there and it's attached to a fixture located at C. Cable D is located in the back quadrant of the YZ plane 
fixed to a point D and is located with the dimension shown. And this cable A has a hook and there's a mass of 150 kilograms hanging from it. What this problem requires us to do is to find the tension in each of the cables. In terms of the solution, we have to recognize that this is a 3D equilibrium problem. Therefore, we'll have to apply the equations of equilibrium. And that means what we have want to do is try to find all the x components of each of those forces, add it, and set it equal to zero. Same thing for the y, and same thing for the z components. The steps that we need to perform is first draw the free body diagram, and then substituted into these three equations of equilibrium. I'm going to draw my free body diagram directly on this problem statement. So focusing on is this ring at A. That ring at A experiences a force along cable C. So it would be a force vector that looks something like that and we'll call that force vector C. Along cable B, it would experience another force, and we'll label it as force B. And along cable D, there would be a force vector D, as well as a force vector that is caused by this weight being attached to the hook, and that would be, let's just call that W. And we know that W is 150 kilograms times 9.81, which would equal to 1,471.5 newtons. And with that serving as the x-axis, y-axis, and the z-axis, along with these angles of 120, 60, and 135. So the next step now is to apply the equations of equilibrium. Equations of equilibrium. And that means that what we want to do is find all the force components in the x so we can set it equal to 0, all the force components in the y so we can set it equal to 0, and all the force component in z and set that equal to 0. Let's first find all the x, y, and z components. So let's start off with the weight force, and that's just um, a z component. So it would actually be 0i plus 0j zero, zero plus a negative 1471.5k newtons. So we've done that for us. Let's go to fb. So fb only has a component along the x component, and we don't know the magnitude of that, so we'll just write it as a variable. So we'll say it's just fb sub xi, and there are no y and z components, so it'd be 0j plus 0k newtons. And we do the same for fc. We want to find the x, y, and z components of it. And for FC, we have the direction cosine angles. We're going to have to use this set of equation to find each of the X, Y, and Z components of force C. So I'll do that right here. So we know that for C, for C, 
is equal to FCXI plus FCYJ plus FCZK. However, we can use these equations. We can use these equations right there, and we'll get that alpha is equal to cosine inverse of FCX over FC. Beta is equal to cosine inverse of FCY over FC. And gamma is equal to cosine inverse of FCZ over FC. So those are the components that we need to apply into our equations of equilibrium. So for the x component for FC, that would equal to FC times cosine of alpha, right? So this is FCX plus FC times cosine of beta, that's FCY plus FC times the cosine of gamma, and that's FCZ K. Next, we need to find the X, Y, and Z components of force vector FD. We note that there's some dimensions that are given there. Therefore, what I'm leaning towards is is establishing a position vector from A to D and using the following equation, using this equation right here. So what we get, so what we get is the following. The force vector FD can be written as a magnitude of it multiplied by the unit vector that's directed along it. And that would be this unit vector that's directed along it. And that would be unit vector D. That unit vector can be written in terms of the position vector. And I'll draw that in purple. So that would be the position vector D. such that it would now equal to FD, the magnitude of force FD, times the position vector from A to D, divided by the magnitude of that position vector. This position vector from A to D can be written in terms of the travel that one would take starting from A and to finally get to point D. So that would be go back one meters in the X direction, jump over two meters in the positive Y, and I forgot to tell you this is also two meters from here to here. So once you're here, you would have to jump up two meters. So in other words, FD is actually negative one I negative one I plus two J plus two K all divided by the magnitude of that position vector which would be negative one squared two squared plus two squared and that would be equivalent to F sub D times negative one I plus two J plus two K all divided by three. So what that does for us is that now we know the X, Y, and Z components of force vector FD, which is given by this expression. So we would have the following. We would have 
FD times a negative 1 over 3i plus FD times 2 thirds, FD times 2 thirds J, and FD times 2 thirds K. So what we have now is the x, y, and z components of all the forces in our three-dimensional force system. So in order to apply the equations of equilibrium, we just add all the x components together, all the y components together, and all the z components together. That gives us the following. So what we do now is we add all the x components together and we set it equal to zero. Okay, so in the x is in that direction. So here I have zero plus fbx plus fc cosine of alpha plus fd times negative one over three is equal to zero. And I do the same for some of the forces in the y, and the y is going in that direction. And I have zero, plus zero, plus Fc cos of beta, plus Fd, two-thirds, and that's also equal to zero. And finally, for the k components, I have sum of all the forces in the z is equal to zero, and that would be negative 1471.5 plus zero, plus Fc cos of gamma, plus Fd times two-thirds, and that's equal to zero. So what we have here are three equations that must be satisfied for us to be able to say that this 3D4 system is in equilibrium. Let's see how many unknowns we have. So we have one, two, and three. We have three equations, three unknowns. So we know the angles for alpha, beta, and gamma. That can be found from the diagram above. And that was alpha is equal to 120 degrees, beta is equal to 135, and gamma is equal to 60. So by solving these equations, either by substitution or Simultaneously, we get the following answers. So FB, which is equal to FBX, is equal to 1.04 kilonewton. FC is equal to 1.22 kilonewtons. And FD is equal to 1,292.94 newtons, which is the same as that FD is equal to 1.29 kilonewtons.